स्वामिन नमस्ते नतलोकबंधो कारुण्य सिंधो पतितं भवाब्धौ मामुद्धरात्मीय कटाक्ष दृष्ट्या रज्व्याति कारुण्य सुधाभिवृष्ट्या स्वामिन नमस्ते स्वामिन नमस्ते स्वामिन नमस्ते स्वामिन नमस्ते ज्ञानस्वरूपम् निजभावयुक्तम् आनंदमानंदकरम् प्रसन्नम् योगीन्द्रमीद्यम् भवरोगवेद्यम् श्रीमद्गुरुम् नित्यमहम् नमामि श्रीमद्गुरुम् नित्यमहम् नमामि नित्याय सत्याय चिदात्मकाय नव्याय भव्याय परात्पराय शुद्धाय बुद्धाय निरंजनाय नमोस्तु नित्यम् गुरु शेखराय नमोस्तु नित्यम् गुरु शेखराय नमोस्तु नित्यम् गुरु शेखराय जय गुरु जय गुरु जय गुरु Again, I start by telling you that whatever we listen to, whatever we read, <coughs> whatever we contemplate upon, our aim should be to be always remaining <coughs> in the awareness of our own real identity, ourself. With that aim, we are going forward. All our lectures, the talks, we are only dwelling upon our real identity and the universal self, the Brahman. And also the state attaining which understanding that <coughs> I am the self alone, the state of that supreme bliss attaining which one will be free of all afflictions, all affectations, all fear. We are constantly telling that and these are the words of our scriptures. So in that, for last two sessions, I think, I've been discussing about the nature of the mind. All our feelings and experiences, whatever we know, it is in our mind, through our mind. Through our no mind only we come to know that I'm happy, I'm unhappy, I'm anxious, I'm very joyful, I'm having a feeling of hatred. All this is through the mind and the mind is within us. And we find that this mind, it is constantly restless, full of thoughts, constantly. Whether we want it or not, thoughts 
go on, go on, go on in the mind. And because of that, we become sometimes disturbed, sometimes agitated, and we don't feel peaceful. So, our aim is to reach that state, our true identity. Actually, I am the self. My true identity is the self, which is eternal, imperishable, which is changeless, which is ever blissful. It is always there. But by mistake, we get identified with the changeful body, mind and intelligence. Can you increase the volume a little bit? So, with because of this wrong identification, I think that all of us know how we suffer. That I-ness and mindness comes and all this suffering and affliction is in our mind. So we have been discussing the nature of our mind. And Vivek Chudamani, Shankaracharya is saying, he, dis he describes the mind as a sacrificial fire, fuel is a numerous desires. From where do the desires come? Because of the mindness. When I consider this body as I, and we consider everything else different from me as belonging to me, desire to possess, desire to have them, or desire to enjoy, comes in. So the desires are the fuel. And the sense organs are the priests. The five sense organs keep on going and interacting with various objects of their likings. And they bring it to the mind, the sacrificial fire. And they keep on giving it, offering it into the mind, as if offering oblations. And there comes, and it leads to the phenomenal world. When the mind is not there, when we sleep off, nothing happens. We don't come to know anything. But as soon as the mind wakes up, this world also wakes up for us. Now, just like the wind, it gathers the clouds, and the wind itself, when it becomes strong, it scatters the crowd. Similarly, this mind, the mind also is the cause of the bondage. What is the bondage? All these things which the mind produces. Fear, anxiety, intolerance, impatience, anger, irritation, hatred, likes, dislikes, spite, all these things in the hands of which we suffer, the shackles of the mind, that is the bondage. And when the mind starts understanding that one can go beyond this and looks for liberation or freedom from these shackles, the mind is able to become liberated. So just like the wind gathers the clouds and the wind itself becomes the cause of scattering the clouds away, similarly the mind, when it becomes attached to the objects, it gets bound. And the same mind, when it understands that these objects will never give me everlasting happiness, will only give me unhappiness and affliction, it comes away from the objects which the senses want to enjoy. And the same mind leads to liberation. Now, how does it bring about the bondage? We talked about bondage. What is the bondage? We feel constricted. We feel a bit overpowered by the desires of enjoying whatever we find in front of us. And we want to possess them. We become attached. We want to cling. And we are completely overpowered by the objects. However much we understand, that our clinging brings in 
and happiness to us, we are not able to be dissociated. The mind creates this attachment first with the body, the I-ness, that is wrongly identifies. It feels that I am this body only. The self is the body, wrongly identifies. And then, with the help of the sense organs, when it sees so many objects in the world, it becomes attached to them. And because of that attachment, it becomes bound, as if bound by the rope, as an animal will be bound by ropes. Same mind, when it becomes dispassionate, it starts looking for freedom. And that is why it is called the mind is the cause of bondage as well as liberation. That is, we are feeling constricted. We sometimes feel that, oh, what is this? I feel so constricted, so limited, with so many anxieties, so much of fear, so much of uncertainties. How will I become free? I think everybody in this world undergoes these feelings. But by God's grace, when a person starts understanding that, yes, there is a way, and that is knowing one's own real identity, that is the starting of liberation. So there is a beautiful shloka which says, Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandhamokshayoho bandhaya vishayasaktam muktyai Nirvishayam smritam. Mana eva manushyanam. For the human beings, the mind alone. See, about the mind, nobody has to tell us. We all know that we have a mind. And so many things goes on in the mind, which we alone know. The people outside, they do not know what is going on in the other's mind. But we know. We know whether we are attached, we know whether we are angry with somebody, we know whether we are disappointed, we know whether we are satisfied. All that happens in the mind is known by us only, by the individual. And because of all this, we feel we are bound, limited, constricted. We are overpowered. We become slave of our mind's traits. In the hands of the traits of the mind, we suffer. So, mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayoho. For bandhana, that is bondage, and moksha is liberation, the mind alone is the cause. Bandhaya vishaya sattam. How do we get bound? That when we get attached to various objects of the world, those becomes important. And when we start feeling that, oh, this is very good, so I must possess. So if I want to possess, what happens? All our interest will be there. Suppose I am not able to possess it, then I will become angry. If I possess it also, I will be anxious or angry also, thinking that somebody may uh, snatch it away from me or the fear that I may lose it. So there is no peace of mind. So bandhaya vishaya sattam. If we have attachment to or clinging to objects of this world, undue clinging, then there will be bondage, no doubt. And muktai nirvishayam smritam. And what is mukti or liberation or freedom? When the mind becomes nirvishaya. Mind doesn't think of objects. It may be in the midst of objects, but it is not attached to them. See, when we sleep, it becomes nirvishaya. When we sleep, we don't see anything. The mind doesn't see. All the things that one was attached to, maybe a, a newborn child, the mother is very attached, maybe something you have bought newly, you want to enjoy. When you sleep off, you have everything has got completely wiped out from the mind. So there is no, so that is a mukti. But that is while sleeping. That is why it is said, 
we should yearn for jeevan mukti what is jeevan mukti remaining in the midst of all worldly objects being aware of them still be liberated commonly and ordinarily when we are in the midst of all so many objects of the world so many interactions that we have and the activities that we have we get bound we get bound because we want a particular result or we want something particular we want to possess something acquire something so we are bound so jeevan mukti is when remaining in this world we still are free we feel freedom liberated because even though one remains in the midst of all objects which the senses can grab and interact one completely is indifferent to them and what happens to that person that person is dwelling in the ananda or the happiness or the bliss of the self the brahman so what happens is that although he is aware he moves about a jeevan mukta what is jeevan mukta one who is liberated in this life itself he moves about just, just like any ordinary person he does all his activities but he is never attached so he moves about neither he is attracted to anything particularly and suppose something comes to him he enjoys that also he doesn't get repulsed to it he doesn't wish for any particular result of his activity whatever work comes he does and the outcome becomes the result he is not particularly attached to or expecting any particular result if it happens according to his uh, it is in his favor it is okay if it does it is not in his favor that also is okay so he is, remains in the bliss of the self i think i have done i have chanted this shloka many times this from viveka chudamani which describes the state of a jeevan mukta who is in the midst of all kinds of sense objects naive indriyani vishayeshu niyukta esha नैवापयुक्त उपदर्शन लक्षण स्थ नियाफलमीशत अवेक्षते सानंद सान्रसपान सुमत्तचित्त नैवेन्द्रिया विषयु नियुक्त ही डज नॉट particularly direct any of his senses to the objects that is he is not particular to enjoy any particular objects and of its senses nai vapayunta vish upadarshana lakshana stha and he is also not repulsive to or he does not detach himself when something comes up and he has to enjoy them naiva kriya phalam api shadavekshate sa and he does not he just witnesses whatever result of his activities are he doesn't get attached to them he doesn't have expectation for a particular result he does his work the outcome is the result whatever it is he just witnesses it but what is his state of the mind and the state of his mind is swananda sandra rasapana sumatta chitta ha sama <coughs> swananda sandra rasapana sumatta chitta ha his his mind is inebriated thoroughly inebriated by drinking 
the nectar of the bliss of atma swananda that swa ananda what is swa oneself ananda you know joy delight bliss happiness a happiness which belongs to himself the happiness he is not trying to get from outside objects he see he is in the midst of senses the sense objects are going and interacting with the respective objects which the senses want so the tongue will want to taste something good the eyes will want to see something which it likes the ear will want to hear something which it is interested in similarly the nose it it wants to smell good you know smells so all these he is allowing all that allowing is let it be he is not obstructing them the normal life he is leading in the midst of everything as any ordinary human being will be he is also like that but he is not particularly interested in that where is his mind see when do we get attached because the mind goes behind the sense on organs like say the eye it wants to see something very nice very colorful maybe very bright and the mind has to be behind it unless the mind is behind any of these gyanendriyas which will give us knowledge of a particular object say there is an object a very bright object very colorful object very beautiful say a flower and my eyes are seeing even though i the eye is seeing unless the mind goes behind it and attaches itself associates itself with the eye i will not know just like the example very common example is that suppose i am sleeping somebody brings a flower opens my eyes shows the flower to me will i have any experience of seeing the flower next morning or when you wake up if somebody ask you did you see the flower i don't know because the mind was not there so for the knowledge with all this knowledge organs the mind has to be with them now this jeevan mukta he is in the midst of all uh, sensory objects the world comes with various objects and they are constantly saying enjoy me enjoy me enjoy me so the our sense organs go towards them why is he not disturbed why does he not get attracted why is it that he does not even get repelled because his mind is not there where is his mind his mind is within himself although he is doing everything but he is dwelling in brahman he is dwelling in brahman he is dwelling in his own self which he can always do we can always do all of us can do my dear children and he is doing that that is why he is jeevan mukta we all can become jeevan mukta our scriptures are telling us promising us so what where is his mind his mind is within himself swananda sandra rasapana sumatta chitta ha he is thoroughly inebriated he is sumatta chitta he is absolutely in that nectarine blissfulness of the self drinking it his own delight the delight which belongs to him swananda dense delight sandra rasapana it is a dense nectarine drink of what his own ananda just imagine it don't just listen try to imagine what is it what is it what kind of drink it is a drink dense nectarine inside us belonging to us 
And we can always drink that. We have to go nowhere. We don't have to pay any money. We don't have to see any particular time and place. It is there, like a fountain it is there. We just have to drink. And to drink it, what, we do, what do we have to do? Look inside. Look inside or allow the mind to come away from the outside objects and look into oneself, remain in oneself, inside oneself and drink that nectar. Swananda Sandra Rasapana. See, when it is very hot, we want a cool drink. How happy we become. And suppose that cool drink, some sharbat has been given to you. It's very watery. Maybe it is cool. It will not be very tasty if it is very watery. No, not much sugar, not much, say if it is an orange drink, orange juice, not much orange is there. Or if it is a, um, you know, with, even with curd we can make lassi or sambharam. Not much substance, it is very watery. We will not enjoy it. So this drink, sandra, it is dense and nectarine and cool. And to whom does it belong? Not to somebody outside you. It belongs to you. So all these, you know, this Jeevan Mukti Vyavahara, all the scriptures are saying it belongs to you. Amritasya Putraha. O oh, you Amritasya Putraha. You the sons of immortality. You the children of immortality. It is there inside you. Just drink that. Don't go behind all the happinesses which you feel are happinesses. Those are all not everlasting. They are short-lived. So, Naivendriyani vishayeshu niyunta esha Naivapayunta upadarshana lakshana stha Naivakriya phalam apishat avekshate sa Swananda sandra rasapana sumatta chitta You become intoxicated by drinking this this beautiful drink of delight, bliss, which is one's own treasure. It belongs to each one of us. So it is there. Although it is there, although it is there, what is the mind doing? Mind gets into bondage. Mind does not look inside. It keeps on looking outside, thinking that I'll get Happiness from this object, that object, that object, my own body and all that I think belong to my body, mind, intelligence, to all those things which I consider as mine, my belongings, I will get happiness from them. And in doing so, fear comes, anxiety comes, tension comes, unhappiness comes, dissatisfaction comes and one gets bound. Where is freedom? So, mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayoho But when somebody takes to the spiritual path, progresses on it, comes to know all this, understands that although the mind is bound, just like the clouds are collected by wind, the wind again scatters the clouds, the mind also has that potential. If it feels dispassionate towards these objects which it feels that will give me happiness, the mind feels that these will not give me happiness, so I must go inside and look for my own happiness, mind will become free. So that is why mind is the cause of both bondage and liberation. When it is in the midst of all kinds of objects, tries to, gets attached to them, thinking that it will give 
happiness, it is bound. And when it becomes nirvishayam, either in the sleep or like a jivan mukta, you are in the midst of vishayas, you are in the midst of all kinds of objects, but your mind is not there. Your mind is drinking this nectarine drink of blissfulness, which comes because of dwelling in your own self. It becomes mukta, mukta, liberated, free, ever free. So this is what happens. So that is why the scriptures are saying, I said, I told you that my dear children, this one shloka you must remember. What is that? Tan manashodhanam karyam prayatne namamukshuna vishuddhe sati chaitasmin muktihi karaphalayate. It says that one must purify the mind. The mind is constantly going out getting attracted to various objects. And why is it going out? Because it is getting identified wrongly with the body-mind intelligence, feels that I am this and these are mine, so wants to acquire, possess. So this I-ness and mindness. because of that, the mind gets into trouble. It becomes impure. Manashodhanam karyam. So manashodhana means one mind has to be purified. What is this purification? Purification is not to have desires. Why do the desires crop up? Because I am finding something different from me which I want to have or I want to enjoy. So this I-ness, considering that I am the self and I am nothing, everything is the self, there is only one self, then all these desires will not crop up at all. Only when there are two, the desires crop up. Because there is something different from me, which I want to make mine. So the desires come. So any seeker of liberation, aspirant of liberation, with effort, prayatnena, making effort, should Make the mind purified. Constantly see that you do not have undue desires. Why I'm saying undue? Because some desires for everyday living the life, some will, something will be there, but never get attached to them. Whatever has to be done as duty, responsibility, we should do, but never get attached to them, considering that this is what I must have in life, or this is what I expect it should happen like this. That is, no clinging should be there. So when one can have that kind of a mind, one becomes liberated. Our scriptures guide us by saying, what is this effort? Prayatnena, what is this effort? This loka is saying that for any aspirant or any seeker, one must make effort and make the mind pure. So what is this effort? All of us must know. The effort is Mokshai kasatya vishayeshu ragam Nirmolya sanyasya cha sarva karma Satshraddhayaya shravanadi nishtho Rajasvabhavam sadhunoti buddhe It says that one must have devotion for liberation. One-pointed devotion, that is wholesome yearning for liberation. Having faith in the scriptures and Guru's words, one knows that I can also become a Jeevan Mukta, I can also have Mukti. In remaining in this life and world itself, I can be free all the shackles will be gone. All the constrictions will be gone. And I will live a life of freedom. So that wholesome yearning should be there. Then, 
desires for an attachment to sensory objects should be uprooted they should be removed from the root why it is why am i desiring is it absolutely necessary what are the things see if we have to live we have to eat so to have a little food is not a desire to take bath to wear a dress or have a place to live have some little resources to have these things these are not desire this is the life is let desire comes when we get attached and we cling to more and more and more more than what is necessary and what is necessary slowly you know when sattva guna increases one will be able to understand what is desire and what is necessity there is a very fine mark that is why it is said you develop sattva guna okay we'll do that later on now <clears throat> it says that the scriptures are saying desire for and attachment to sensory objects should be removed from the root and renounce actions delusion and clinging to whatever activities you are doing to their results should be removed firm faith in spiritual knowledge the brahman the ultimate reality firm faith should be there that is we are actually treading this path spiritual path we are hearing listening a faith should be there that it is so when our scriptures are saying our gurus are saying there is this state when one can attain which one can attain that is brahman attaining which one feels eternal imperishable self one feels expanded nothing is there no affectation is there so this supreme reality the brahman which is one without a second which alone is everywhere permitting to have faith in that knowledge then regular practice of shravana manana nididhyasana that is listening reflecting contemplating meditating all those very regularly one has to do one who practices all these will be able to destroy the outgoing tendencies of the mind and intelligence what is the outgoing tendencies all along i have been explaining now the mind goes out things that all these outside things will give us happiness whereas the happiness is inside it is there it's my own so when we follow this with effort what did it say what is the scripture saying prayatnena make effort so that mind becomes pure that is from the mind desire will go desire will go when the iness will go that is when you will understand that you are not this body mind and intelligence you will be understanding that you are the self in that case when that kind of a purity comes you will be liberated so we have to make effort for that and these are the steps which our scriptures very kindly with lot of love affection mercy compassion our the scriptures our gurus are telling please follow this every seeker dear children every seeker has to see are we following are we following and to what extent you can follow you follow next time you try to do a little more have love for it enjoy doing that now what exactly is the working of the mind so this purification you know this purification 
we were having a discussion. So Miru was telling me that when she becomes tired, then she finds that all her impure traits come out. So I did not f ask further what exactly she meant by that, whether she shouts at somebody or she becomes very hopeless and dissatisfied, I didn't ask, but she said, told me this. What? That when my body is tired, all my impure traits come out. And she told me that when it comes out, I feel it's good. Part of it has gone. But mind you, part may go. You have to take it from the root. Nirmulya. This is the very, very important thing. You have to see that all the impurities which we have, our traits, the impure traits that we have, undesirable traits, you can say, we ourselves know we do not like such traits, that we anger we do not like, impatience we do not like, intolerance we do not like, hatred we do not like, anxiety we do not like, so many things in our mind, which is always there in the mind, in smaller or bigger degrees, we do not like, fear we don't like. All these things we have to nirmulya, that is it has to go out from the root. How will it go out from the root? It will go out from the root only when we understand that I am the self. That I-ness goes, mindness goes, and along with that desires will go. So, then she was saying that sometimes we do not even understand what are the traits which make us suffer. Yes, we will understand. How will we understand? You know, as we proceed, I'm taking some shlokas from Viveki Chudamani, supplementing with Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Sara Sangraha, and from here and there some things. Only where are we going, you know? Where are we being led to, you know? It is telling us, develop Sattva Guna. As we go forward, you will see, all the shlokas are saying, develop sattva guna. And what is sattva guna? Sattva guna has the property of illumination, knowledge and light. When sattva guna increases, what happens? You will be able to understand all the undesirable traits in your mind. Even if it is in a very subtle manner, you will be able to understand it. Because the sattva guna will show light on that. And it is something like that. Or Swamiji gives this example. Say, suppose we are polishing a wooden table. We are polishing and polishing and polishing. As we go on polishing, and the table is getting more and more polished, even a small speck or spot of dross or unpolished place will be seen. That is, the polishing is increasing. When our sattva guna increases, as in a polished table, as we increase the polish, a little bit of impurity will be seen. Similarly, when the sattva guna, we make an effort to increase the sattva guna, a little bit of dross, little bit of undesirable, desirable trait, even if it is very, very subtle, the sattva guna will throw light on it and will make us understand and tell us how to remove it. This is why one must be a lover of sattva guna. But we know the sattva guna also binds. Anyway, so, mokshaika satya vishaya shuragam nirmulya sanyasya cha sarva karma satshraddhaya ya shravanadi nishtho rajasvabhavam sadhunoti buddhe. So when we do this shravana manana and nididhyasana, then the outgoing tendency of the mind and intelligence, that will be checked. It will be purified, purified. Mano hyamushya pravanasya hetuhu antarvahischartha manen antarvahischartha manen veti shrinoti jigratya munaiva chekshate 
ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ಪೃಶತ್ಯತ್ತಿ ಕರೋತಿ ಸರ್ವಂ ಮನೋಹ್ಯಮುಷ್ಯ ಪ್ರವಣಸ್ಯ ಹೇತು ಅಂತರ್ವಹಿಶ್ಚಾರ್ಥಮನೇನ ವೇತ್ತಿ ಶೃಣೋತಿ ಜಿಘ್ರತ್ಯ ಮುನೈವ ಚೇಕ್ಷತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ಪೃಶತ್ಯತ್ತಿ ಕರೋತಿ ಸರ್ವಂ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ how the mind works how the mind works when we mind through the mind only we come to know everything through our gyanendriyas and the mind is the reason for all the propensities the sensory the sense organs they go to the different objects and when the mind gets associated whether something happening outside us or insight through the mind alone we come to know all the knowledge is through the mind and that is how we can shrinoti that is we can hear jigrati we can sm- smell smidoti jigrati ವಕ್ತಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಸ್ಪೃಶತಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟಚ್ ಈಕ್ಷತೆ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಡಸ್ along with this yanendriyas the knowledge organs how does it become bound bandhascha moksho manasaiva pumsam arthopya narthopya munaiva sidhyati shuddhena moksho manineena bandho viveekato urthopya viveekato anya shuddhena moksho manineena bandho ವಿವೇಕತೋರ್ಥ ಅಪ್ಯ ಅವಿವೇಕತೋನ್ಯ ವಿವೇಕತೋರ್ಥಪ್ಯವಿವೇಕತೋನ್ಯ ಬಂಧಶ್ಚ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಮನಸೈವ ಪುಂಸ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಮೇ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಐ ಹವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಸೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ದ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ the same thing they will be repeating again and again again and again why otherwise it will not remain in the mind that the mind is the cause of bondage we understand very well the mind is the cause of bondage that the mind alone that itself is also the cause of liberation we must know and we must know it very well so that we are interested in becoming liberated otherwise we'll feel that oh i'm suffering i'm suffering i am always afflicted so many things happen to me why me why me we'll be only lamenting our scriptures are telling us again and again yes your mind is making you bound but your mind alone can make you liberated know this very well for that you have to make some effort this is what the scriptures are telling through various ways in various methods it's only showing us the way you know it is like a torch suppose there is a dark pathway and a child is afraid to go the mother says come i have got a torch i will take you she will hold the hand of the child show the torch and take the child ahead the scriptures the words of the scriptures are just like that it is showing us the way we only have to hold the hand of that shruti mata the scriptures are called mother hold the hands of the scriptures the words their meanings what are they telling us have faith in that suppose the child feels that even if i hold the hand of my mother and she shows me the way still there are ghosts there i am afraid to go 
the child has to have faith in the mother. The mother will take, take the child right on the right path where he will not be afraid and he will be able to cross that stretch of dark road. We have to have that faith. So, Bandhascha Moksho Manasai Vapumsam. Bandha, Bandhana, the bondage, and Moksha, liberation. Manasa, Manasai Vapumsam. Manasa Eva, because of the mind, by the mind alone one gets bound, and by the mind alone one gets liberated. Arthaha api, anarthaha api siddhyati. By the mind alone, good happens and by the mind alone, the bad also happens. How you look at it, what path you take, what attitude you take, what becomes your outlook, by that alone, you will be seeing everything as good or bad. The mind alone can bring about hell, it can bring about heaven. It can bring about hell as bandhana, bondage. Any bondage, we do not like to be constricted, limited, always fearful, always tense, always anxious, always with a fear of losing something. What will happen, what will happen, fear of the future. What will happen to my children or what will happen to my body when I become old? These fears are always there. So we are always bound by these. So we do not want that bondage. So we are living in hell. But if we look the other way and have faith in the scriptures, in the words of the Guru and know this, that my real self is such which has no bondage at all, it is free. I have to look into myself and be re-established in my own true identity. Then you start living in heaven, you become liberated. Shuddhena mokshaha, malinena bandhaha, a pure mind results in liberation. So again this purity and impurity comes. Initially it is the traits when we start with baby steps, you know, right in the beginning, the undesirable traits of the mind in the hands of which we suffer, we have to remove them. Just like polishing a dirty mirror. And ultimately it is, ultimately it is removing the I-ness the wrong identification that I am this, I, this self is that body, mind and intelligence. Removing that wrong identification. So, shuddhena mokshaha, one has to purify the mind. When the mind is purified, no desire is there, that is that I-ness and mindness gone, and we make effort to do that, mind becomes clean, no agitation. No desire means no agitation of the mind. Mind is absolutely clean, calm, tranquil, restful. The self reveals itself. The self is there. Because of all these agitations, we were not able to see it, not able to understand it. Maline in a bandha, and an impure mind produces bondage. I don't think I have to say it again and again, though I am saying it again and again, or constantly say it that in the hands of our traits, undesirable impurities of the mind, we are suffering. Suppose a person who becomes irritated very soon, that is his bondage. He will become irritated, he will shout, then later he will feel that, oh, I should not have behaved like this. However much one tries, one is not able to restrain the senses, restrain the mind. So our scriptures are saying, make effort, make effort, it is possible. How is it possible? How is it possible? 
start loving the self love god love brahman love yourself your own true identity as you start looking inside understanding that there is this swananda one's own ananda is there one's own happiness is there one's own delight is there one's own illumination and enlightenment is there which is the characteristics of one's own self then what happens automatically interest in all other objects of the world which all along one was thinking that i will get happiness from there interest comes away from there the mind turns inwards the outgoing mind turns inwards that is what happens that change happens i think it is happening to all of you only when i am saying telling you the shlokas it is a confirmation whether it is happening or not happening that is why we should read the scriptures you know scriptures are for confirmation and when you read it you will find that oh i am feeling like this yes i also feel like this or is it so can i reach there what is the process by which i can reach this is sadhana this is sadhana my dear children this is the sadhana and it's so much of joy in the sadhana and it says what did it say bandhascha moksho manasaiv pumsam arthah api anarthah amuna eva sidhyati the mind by mind itself one gets bound and my mind itself one gets liberated and good and bad all is mind's creation heaven and hell everything is mind's creation shuddhena moksha by pure mind you will get liberated impure mind will bound you and make you produce bondage so now pure mind will result in liberation so it is saying is giving us a indication a hint what we the ordinary people when we are know that we are bound by our nature our traits and we suffer because of these traits we want to become free it is telling us dear children a pure mind is liberation unaffectedness is liberation a pure mind so how will you know how to become pure what should we do to become pure so in the next line it says vivekatah arthah api avivekatah anyah with viveka auspiciousness happens that is use your discrimination use your intelligence enlightened intelligence use your intelligence and by your intelligence have discrimination viveka what is auspicious what is not what is good what is not good what is real what is unreal what is permanent what is impermanent that is whatever traits are there and whatever your senses want to enjoy going outside have the help of this viveka we human beings we have been given mind and intelligence by god we are much much different from all other creatures the animals we have been given this faculty to think and to discriminate think by the mind and discriminate and analyze by the intelligence and that intelligence can become enlightened when we dwell in the self dwell in brahman so with the help of this intelligence which has this viveka power discriminating power constantly see what should be removed 
and what trait should be strengthened. That is, which of the traits which will help you in your sadhana and which are the traits which will not help you in your sadhana. How you can restrain your senses, the senses which are constantly outgoing, trying to tell you this is very good, that is very good, enjoy that, eat that, see that, go there, constantly telling us. And telling us what? You will get a lot of happiness. You know, if you go and see that place, you will be very happy. You know, if you listen to this, you will be very happy. You know, if you eat this, you will be very happy. Always trying to distract us from our core and trying to take us outside. Completely not telling us that all those happinesses are short-lived. They will not tell us. By our viveka, using our viveka, vivekataha arthaha api avivekataha anya. Using our viveka, our discriminating power, which our intelligence has, we come to know that, no, if I eat too much sweet, I will be sick. Or if I do this, unnecessarily the mind gets scattered and it is useless. It will not help me. So everything that we do through our senses, using the intelligence and the discriminating power of the intelligence, you can become pure and slowly progress to liberation. This is what this loka is saying. Vikshe Pashakti Rajasakriyatmika. Now the question is, why does the mind follow all these senses and tries to go outward, you know. Always our nature is the combination of three gunas. Sattva guna, Raja guna, Raju guna and Tamas. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And Vikshepa Shakti Rajasa Kriyatmika. At any time they will be in some proportion. Sometimes sattva will be more and rajas and tamas will be less. Sometimes rajas will be more, sattva and tamas will be less. Sometimes tamas will be more and the other two will be less. Now each has their own propensities. Now this rajas, what does it do? Vikshepa shakti. Rajasa kriyatmika vikshepa shakti. This Rajagu, Raj, Rajoguna, it has a distracting power, projecting power, which is of the nature of activity. It will always make you active. Yata Purani Prabriti Prasrita, Prasrita, and from which the flow of activity has originated. From this Rajoguna. Asyaha Nityam Prabhavanti. From this also continuously is produced what? Ragadayaha, Dukhadayaha, Ye Manasap Vikaraha. Vikshepa Shakti, Rajasakriyatmika, Yata Pravritti, Prasrita Purani, Ragadayo Sya, Prabhavanti Nityam, Dukhadayo. Ye manaso vikaraha. So, this, from this Rajoguna, what happens is that it makes people into get into activities, always, and desires. Also, it produces attachment and grief. Because if we get into activity, activity means something different from me we want to achieve or implement or thinking some about something, what all, something different from me. And if that is so, in that actions, interactions and everything, what will be produced? Either attachment, possessiveness, clinging, and if the wishes are not fulfilled, that desires are not fulfilled, there will be grief and affliction. 
So this Rajoguna, it brings about grief, attachment, affliction. Not only that, if you go a little deeper, you will find the from Rajoguna, that is when we start doing activities, we start feeling that this is mine, I have to do something or I have to achieve something, I have to possess that or I have to uh, think something and come and make something, many th the, all, any kind of activity. Because of the activity what happens, kamaha, krodho, lobhaha, dambha, asuya. Kama krodho lobha dambhadya suya ahankare shva matsaradya stughoraha dharma vete rajasa pum pravrittihi yasma desha tadrajo bandhahe tu. Don't get distracted. We started thinking about wow the mind acts. Why does the mind get bound? That we get bound and that we are bound, that we are not free, that we are under the influence of anxiety, fear, etc., etc. We are constantly, every moment we are experiencing. How do they come about? We are trying to see that. And then the, we see that that we have three gunas. Always we are the mixture of three gunas, our nature, the mind. And out of that, rajoguna and tamoguna. Now we are doing rajoguna. I think this guna, Nathar Swamiji has taken very, very in detail many times. I am only trying to tell you that how the mind gets agitated. So this Shloka says that from the Rajoguna, what happens is that it brings about activity. And whenever there is activity, the result will be either attachment or grief or feeling of loss, unhappiness. You can say that there will be affliction. So it says from desire, the Rajoguna sets us into activity because there is a desire that I must do that action. I must have this. I must possess this. That is the action. So the karma starts, the desire starts. And when we start thinking of some object, we start thinking about that. In Bhagavad Gita we know this, Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangha Sangas te shu pajayate. As, as we start thinking, thinking, thinking of the object that we have to get, achieve and possess, what happens? From desire, lobha starts. Sometimes greed will be there. And if it is not fulfilled, we are not able to be successful in achieving what we wanted, there will be anger. Also, there will be anger if somebody, I am trying, but somebody is obstructing me, giving me hindrance, what it may be anything, then also there will be anger. So, lust, anger, greed, arrogance, spite, egoism, envy, jealousy, all these are coming out of this Rajoguna. That is, which sets us, sets us into activity. These are the dreadful attributes of rajas, from which the worldly tendency of man is produced. Dharma ete rajasaha pum pravittihi yasma desha tad rajo bandhahetuhu. And we know that all these traits, lust, anger, greed, arrogance, spite, egoism, envy, jealousy, etc., etc., these are the things which bind us. So, the Rajoguna, which is one of the gunas, if we allow our mind to be of Rajoguna character, that is, we allow Rajas to be 
more in our nature, then we will be victim of all these. And that is how we get bound. And that is the actual thing. Normally, the Rajoguna and Tamoguna are more in people. That is why people are acting, acting, acting. So many activities. Even if people will retire, they will not sit quietly. They again want to do some act activities. They cannot s sit without activity. Something has to be done. Something has to be uh, achieved, possessed, and we feel proud that I am able to do it. I am having this. I have done this. Today I have done this. Tomorrow I will do that. In 16th chapter of Gita, very nicely all these things have been written. The nature of human beings. I am this, I am this, I am very skilled. I can think very well, I can do very well. I have got so much of power, I have got so much of money. These are the thoughts constantly in the mind. And these are the effects of Rajoguna. And if this Rajoguna brings about these thoughts, we know very well that we are not restful. We are always bound bound by this and to attain that swananda my own ananda to be dwelling in that ananda drinking that ananda what do we have to do the mind must be quiet so this rajoguna has to be removed this rajas tendency of the mind has to be completely removed how will we do that it has to be at least brought down. How will we, how will we do that? Sattva guna. So we have to bring about Sattva guna. So in this sloka it says, Yes, <coughs> Kama krodho lobha dambhad yasuya Ahankare shatma matsarad yastud ghoraha Dharma yete rajasaha pum prabitti Yasma desha tad raju bandha hetuhu. Therefore, rajas is the cause of bondage. In Bhagavad Gita, this shloka is there. Tribidham narakasyedam dwaramash dwaram nashanamatmanaha kamakrodhas tatha lobhaha tasma de tatrayam tyajet. And it says that this. It is a dwara for complete destruction of oneself. It is a hell. What is a hell? Trividham narakasyedam. Three things are, will lead us to the hell and completely destroy us, destroy oneself. What are those three things? Kamaha, krodhaha, tatha, lobhaha. See, we have in the this shloka that I read, it is saying all that, kamaha, krodhaha, lobha. The first three things. It has said, kamaha, krodhaha, lobhaha, dambhaha. Kamaha is what? Lust. Krodhaha, anger. Lobhaha, greed. Dambhaha, arrogance. Asuya, spite. Ahankaraha, that is irsha, egoism. Irsha, envy. Matsara, Jealousy, the sloka that I read, Viveka Chudamani 112, which, which tells us what are the expressions of a Rajoguna. All these are there in us, in greater or lesser degree. Sometimes, suppose one is becoming jealous, then that jealousy will be more express, expressive. Others may be a little less. When one is angry, the anger will be more. But all these are belonging to the Rajoguna. What is that? Kamaha, lust. Krodhaha, anger. Lobhaha, greed. Then Asuya, Dambhaha, arrogance. Asuya, spite. Ahankara, egoism. Irsha, envy. Matsara, jealousy. These are Ete rajasaha ghoraha dharmaha. Ghoraha dharmaha. The saying, all these traits which human beings have 
And we feel that it is very common. Everybody has. But because we do not make any effort to get rid of these, we suffer. We remain bound. If we want to be liberated, we must remove them. So it is saying, Ete Rajasaha Ghoraha Dharma. These are the dreadful attributes of Rajas. So any spiritual seeker, my dear children, if we are spiritual seekers and we want to progress, we have to see, do I have this? Do I have this? Of what percentage? Why is it that even though I try not to, not to have this, why is it that sometimes I become slave of these traits? I become very angry, I shout, to, shout at people, or I have some greed for certain things, or I have a feeling that I am very good, I am very, I am, I am the best, or I know this very well, and I get, get some pride. I have jealousy. Why is it that I have? Even if I have, can I get rid of them? Any serious seeker should think like this. Understanding, that is why these are all explained. Understanding the mind. Not taken for granted that, oh, these are there. Oh, it sometimes happens. No. There, are, there is a stage where you can reduce them, remove them. And we have to. And it is actually very, very interesting. I would tell you, it is interesting. Don't become afraid. Oh, I have this. Yes, yes, little, little of all these I have. So can I become pure? And you become dispirited, disappointed. No, actually it is very adventurous. Every day, every moment you will be finding that you are, you are actually facing one or two of these. And as soon as a little of Sattva Guna will show you the mind and will allow you, will, for, will show a torch on your, these traits, Rajoguna traits and show you, see, you are a little jealous of that other person or you are a little proud today or you are a little greedy of this particular item which has been made in the Annakshetra, like that. So it becomes very interesting. We see our traits, we try to remove them. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we succeed. And it is a journey. It is an interesting journey. Throughout the day, throughout the day, you can never become bored because you are always playing with your mind. Playing with your mind, trying to sweep out things. They sometimes again come back, again you sweep out and slowly, slowly you actually go towards the purity. It is beautiful. There should never be any disappointment. There should never be any disappointment, dissatisfaction. Always there should be inspiration, inspiration, enthusiasm. So it says, therefore, rajas is a cause of bondage. And in Bhagavad Gita, the same shloka, it says, in this shloka also, kamaha, krodhaha, lobhaha. Three have been given, one, two, three, out of so many. It has listed out so many, but the first three are these. In Bhagavad Gita, it says, trividham narakasyedam, dwaranashanam atmanaha. It is a door to destroy yourself. What are those, what are the, what three are the doors? The three traits, those are the door. What are those? Kamaha, Krodaha, Tatha, Lobaha. That is the lust or desire. Krodha is anger and Lobaha is greed. Tasmat, therefore, Etatrayam Tyajet. So it says, to become pure, Leave these three. Remove, reject, renounce, tyajet. So here, some more are there. And if you find, if you try to go inside, you will find that subtly many things are there. Then, it will come to what the tamas is also bringing in. This is about when we try to, when we become active, 
and we want to possess and uh, in the process we get attached, we start clinging and in the process we become either fearful or angry or this or that. So in the, in the process of activity. How does tamas also bring about bondage? That we'll see next time. So this is how the mind acts. And then it will also tell us, like a very, very loving mother, what we can do to reach that state where it is only prasada. Prasada madhigachati. Prasidity. 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 And we can reach there, definitely. <clears throat> Sampurnam Jagadevanandanavanam Sarve Pikalpadrumaha Gangam Vari Samasta Vari Nivaha Punya Samasta Kriyaha Vaja Prakrita Samskrita Shruti Shiro Varanasi Medini Sarva Vasthiti Rasya Vastu Vishaya Drishti Parabrahmani Sarva Vasthiti Rasya Vastu Vishaya Drishti Parabrahmani Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai Guru.